up guys, my name is Courtney Budson and this is What's For Din. Today I'm gonna be showing you how to make a pan seared steak with a red wine reduction bordelaise sauce. As fancy as that sounds, trust me when I tell you it is so easy, you can definitely do this at home. And no, this is not the authentic bordelaise sauce, but this is my rendition of it. And I'm the type of person that really truly believes that a good steak has to be done on the grill, but once I tried this, me and my husband were drooling. It is so good. So let's go over the ingredients. You're gonna need some diced shallots, some red wine, some chicken broth, a slab of butter, and I have a fresh bay leaf and some fresh thyme here. By all means, if you don't have fresh, then just use dried, it's no big deal. You're also gonna need an oil to sear your steak in. I'm just using regular canola oil. And of course, you're gonna need some steaks. Now, I'm using New York strip steak. It's really easy to find, relatively cheap. And you can tell they both have weird wonky shapes. <laughs> There's a reason behind that. What I do is I take them to the cutting board and I chop off all that extra fat that's on the outer edge because you really don't need all that. And then any meat that's attached to that fat, I take that off and then chop it into really tiny little chunks, almost so it looks like ground beef. And that's what I have here. And we're going to use this to our advantage because we're actually going to brown and caramelize this in a pan and that's gonna help us make a killer sauce. So let's go over to the stove and we'll get started. So we're gonna start by making our red wine reduction sauce. So in my pan, that's already starting to get hot. I'm gonna go ahead and add all my little bits that I chopped off. I have my pan set to medium high and what we're looking to do is brown this up and get a really nice caramelization. So however long that takes for you, it depends on your pan and all that other stuff, how much you actually have in here. As you can see, I didn't add any oil because that fat's gonna render off and it's gonna create its own oil anyway. So you don't need the extra oil. So just let that caramelize up and I'll show you what it looks like when it's there. So you can see my meat is nicely browned and starting to caramelize. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and add my shallots and we're gonna caramelize these as well. I'm gonna add some salt and some pepper. So I have my heat set at about medium. I don't want it too hot because I don't want to burn the meat. And to get a good caramelization, you really gotta do it nice and slowly. So about medium, medium low is perfect. Anything higher than that, you're not gonna get that great of a caramelization. So you just wanna keep cooking these until you get that really nice golden brown color. So my onions have caramelized quite a bit. And I'm using a nonstick pan so you can see I don't have a lot of fun, but if you are using a regular pan, you will have a lot of fond at the bottom. That's good, that's not bad. It doesn't mean that you did anything wrong. It actually makes a lot more flavor. Even though I'm using nonstick, the flavor is still there, trust me. So now that everything's caramelized, I'm gonna go ahead and add my wine. Now you wanna make sure that your pan's not too hot, otherwise this could flambe, but because my pan's not very hot, I can add it right in without having to worry about it. So go ahead and turn up the heat now to about medium high. Give that a good stir. And we're looking to reduce this to about half. So I'll show you what it looks like, but it's a more thicker consistency. And then we'll go on to the next step. And of course, before I forget, I gotta add my bay leaf and my sprigs of thyme. I just throw the whole thing in there. So you can see that has reduced a lot and our wine is almost like a thick gravy. So we're gonna go ahead and add our chicken broth. And you're gonna let this reduce again. Now you could really do this as thick as you want. Um, there's really no right or wrong answer. I like mine kind of thick, so I like to reduce it at least by half once again. So you can see that it's reduced a lot. When I pull the push all the stuff back, you can see that it takes a long time for it to fill up. So now I'm gonna add, if it'll come out, my butter. <laughs> and I'm just gonna keep stirring this until that's all melted through. So you can see my butter's fully melted, so I'm going to pass all this through a sieve very carefully and strain out all of the goodies. Now you don't have to if you don't want to, but I like to do that. So now the pan sauce is done, we're just gonna go ahead and set that aside, and we're gonna start seasoning up our steaks because that's what's next. So I'm using some coarse salt and pepper on both sides, and I like using coarse salt and pepper because you'll get a better crust on it. I like to press it into the meat. So my steaks are nice and seasoned, and I'm going to just use the exact same pan that I was using before. All I did was wipe it out with some paper towel. If there's some extra residue in there, then that's no big deal. So now I'm making sure it's getting nice and hot because you want a good sear on this. I'm gonna add a little bit of my oil. Now you wanna make sure this oil is hot because that's what's gonna give it a really nice crusty sear. And a good way I like to test if my oil is done or not, I take my wooden spoon, and if you hear that noise, when it does that, that means it's ready. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and place these right in. Like I said, you want a hot pan. 
Now I usually cook these for about three to four minutes on both sides because I like a medium rare to medium. Um, it's really up to you. You could do five minutes for well done, but just keep an eye on it. Don't overcook it because then you're gonna have some tough meat, but just leave it alone for at least two minutes and then you'll be perfect. So once you have a nice brown sear on the other side, go ahead and do a flip and then go ahead and get a nice crust on the opposite side. Once you know that you have both sides nice and seared, you can go ahead and turn the heat down to a medium high because you don't want to burn the crust because that's just gonna make it taste awful. And this is optional, but I like to get a little bit of a sear on the outer edges just by turning it on its side like so. And I ended up cooking these steaks for about four minutes on each side because they are about an inch thick. So just keep in mind how thick or thin your steaks are. Once they're done, go ahead and set them aside on a plate. Let them rest for at least 10 minutes so that all the juices can settle. You don't want to cut into these right away, otherwise all those juices will escape. But then after that, you can go ahead and top with that sauce and you are ready to serve. This is the finished product. I went ahead and poured some of that sauce over the top and I can hardly wait to dive in. My husband has already devoured the other piece, so yeah, this one's mine. <laughs> some of that sauce, and you can see I like mine kind of pink. That's just how I like it. Oh my goodness. Mm. This is seriously a party flavor in my mouth. It is so delicious. I can't stop eating it. So if you guys want to make this for a loved one, if it's like a special night, romantic evening, and you want to do something fancy, this would be perfect for that. You can pair it with some sweet potatoes, some garlic mashed potatoes, really anything you want. And I will say that the first few times that I pan seared a steak, when I took it off, it was not done enough for me. Don't worry, even if you already cut into it, you can always throw it right back on just for a couple more minutes and then you'll be perfectly fine. So there's really no way to mess up unless you overcook it. So if you wanna make this for your loved ones, just look below in the description. I have all the measurements and the written instructions so you can print them out. And if you did like this video, don't forget to smack that like button. And if you're not already subscribed, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I have many more recipes to come. And as always, thanks so much for hanging out with me and we'll see you next time. Bye.